What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast. We're going to talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, as always, I'm joined by Shan Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? So, welcome to Wednesday's episode. So, definitely uh, go back if you have not heard already. So, Monday, we talk about a critical um, uh, Apple vulnerability you need to patch out immediately if you have not already. Uh, Tuesday, we discuss uh, Apple uh, dipping their toe a little bit more in the security or a lot more depending on your perspective. So definitely tune in for that one as well. I promise it's not an Apple podcast. <laughs> we just so happen to go back to back this week. Uh, and then today we'll, we'll have a, a topic of discussion. Thursdays will either be Ask Us SP or a throwback episode because we have so much content I'd like to reshare if possible. The, um, highlight some of our our uh, our our nuggets <laughs> of wisdom out there. And then Friday's everything else, movies, books, games, TV shows, all that good stuff. But without further ado, I'll give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article is actually from Wired.com, written by Andy Greenberg. And the title is The International Criminal Court Will Now Prosecute Cyber War Crimes. So what they have on here as kind of a, a subheadline is, and the first case on the docket may well be Russia's cyber attacks against civilian critical infrastructure in Ukraine. So this is kind of what they're talking about when they talk about cyber war crimes, right? Is you going in there and and attacking utilities and things of that nature that that deal with the public, right? So that's kind of what they're what they're going in and they're kind of using like the Geneva convention to kind of address this. Right. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a cool way of going about to, to, uh, to address this, which we, I I'm sure you're going to agree with this. Like this is long overdue, right? Like this is one of those things where it might, it might hold a little bit more weight, but it could, what it could end up doing is it could uh, make some of these other countries like Russia, right. But they, they don't come out and mention Russia specifically when they talk about this, but this could be one of those things where it just pushes Russia even farther away to where they're like, you know what, now we really don't care. Right. You know, fire, fire Z missiles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Actually, that's more French. Isn't it? Fire Z missiles. That's not French. That's not what I meant to go for there. <laughs> that's more, supposed to be more Russian. <laughs> In Russia, missiles fire you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no. So, this is what they're trying to do. So, so it, what they say here is cyber warfare is something that needs to be more more seriously addressed, right? So, um, attempts to impact critical infrastructure like medical facilities, which things we've talked about here, um, your utilities like your your gas pipelines, things of that nature, right? Um, uh, electrical, uh, even uh, even though it's going to be harder, right? Like in this day and age, um, it this is one of those things where it's like, if you try to go after like nuclear or something like that, like this is the types of things they're kind of do. Now, if you try to go after nuclear, that's more than likely an act of war. And like, they're kind of out of the, they're kind of out of the game at that point. But there, this is the, they realize the importance of, of cyberspace and what's going on there and how people are going about doing things. Right. So like when it comes to Russia, and again, they don't, they don't mention Russia and Ukraine specifically, but when it comes to that, like the, one of the first things Russia did before they did this invasion last year, was they went in there and started messing with the infrastructure, right? Before they rolled a single tank up in there. That's what they did. So the importance of that is knowing that you have, it's it's a bunch of countries out here, right? That are that support um, international uh, crimes and things like that for the Hague. This is the Hague, right? Is where they do all of these out of, right? I believe it's the Hague, H-A-G-U-E. Yeah. Yeah. So because you have so many countries that support this, right? This is one of those things where like, it's kind of like NATO, right? You mess with one, you mess with all type thing. So I, 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 my hope is that this is a deterrent to some of these countries that are going out, going out and doing some of these things like Russia to Ukraine. Uh, you got China over there messing around in the Pacific, you know, with, with different countries and saying, Hey, you're, you belong to us. Um, that's the hope. And the hope is not that you push them farther away and alienate them more, but you kind of bring them, bring them back into being more civilized than what they're doing right because cyber warfare is where it's at right we've we've said it on this show numerous times like before a single tank rolls missile fires bullet fires you're you're going after you're going into these countries through cyber warfare you know what i mean so uh ryan what's your thoughts on this yeah no i i uh i i agree that i believe it, it's a good initiative and i, I think it's uh long overdue uh it's simply been implementation however uh, little worried about um, 
because I I agree with them saying that hey cyber is the new uh, the f- new frontier. You can have humongous impact on uh, communities of people who are disadvantaged, uh, as well as just uh, citizens citizenships of other countries. Um, and as as you can see, like I think it's the first two attributed blackouts uh, through cyber uh, warfare hit Ukraine, right? Like pre. Um, pre-invasion uh, type scenarios. So like those are, are things that are, are markers of incursion, right? Like we're going to hit your cyber first, we're going to knock out your communications, your banking, we're going to spread disinformation, and then we're going to roll tanks in. Um, and that's that's with two, uh, two well-developed countries, right? So what about those who are able to uh, attack or be aggressive who are just factions or they're just... Uh, uh, people who are hacktivists or siding with a, a particular country. Like, what what do you do with these one-offs, these these smaller uh, variations of potential war crimes, right? Um, so I think it's a good idea. What I what I think is going to happen though is it's going to have a an effect for those who uh, thought they were doing doing right. Right, they sided with the wrong side of history, per se. Not to say that I I feel is not to say that I'm I'm uh, empathetic so to speak, but I think people will find out that they were on the wrong side of the law uh, and that this will cause uh, bigger blunders and issues in the near future, right? Because there's a lot of people who hacked on Ukraine's uh, side um, uh, against Russia and vice versa uh, in this incursion. So who determines who's on the right side of warfare, right? I assume it'll be this international court, but that doesn't mean that they're going to agree with you specifically as, you know, would-be hacktivists. Uh, so there are going to be a lot of people locked up or potentially um, locked up because of this, uh, not only because of this current uh, war between these two factions, but all future wars to come, right? Like people were like, oh, well, you know, I... I was on the U.S. side of this and yada, 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 and I attacked, uh, you know, whomever uh, happened to be the the world power that we were fighting or, or, or what have you. Hopefully it does not happen, right? But it, if that war to war to break out in the future and people uh, decide to side with a country, but they're not combatants, so to speak, right? It gets really weird, right? The lines are very gray. So I think it's going to be a lot of um, issues because of this. So I'm, I'm all for it. Like, I think, I think that, uh, cyber warfare, uh, is, is just as impactful as, uh, conventional warfare. However, I think it's, it should put people, um, it should give people pause before they jump into the fight, right? Like th- these countries did not ask for your help. These countries did not, uh, um, inscribe you to the, to service. So you need to stay out of the, uh, the fight basically, because you could wind up in international prison <laughs> for the rest of your life. Uh, so yeah, play stupid games, get get stupid prizes, right? So I, I think that that's going to be something that comes up uh, in the future. So I'm for it, but I'm just hesitant because there's going to be a, a lot of people who are going to make mistakes <laughs> and wind up in very serious hot water. And, and you bring up a very good point, right? Because even in the article, they mentioned how um, they will go after, you know, going up as high as the president of a country, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like for these different war crimes and whatnot. Like in the article, they mentioned Putin, right? Just to reference the whole Russia Ukraine thing. But um, if they have no problem going after presidents of, of established, you know, countries, like they have no problem going after Joe Schmo in the basement that was like. Right, uh, right. You know? Yeah. That, that's definitely going to happen, right? People are going to be extradited from their countries uh, to, uh, to to potentially um, go to go to trial. Uh, which international court I'm sure is not uh, it's not as easy as you would think. Like I'm gonna go there and defend myself. Like uh, and like who's to say you you get a free defense? Who's to say that you like there, in some countries you wind up in a cage in the jail, right? Like you've seen that where you're already you're you're presumed guilty until you're proven innocent, right? Like court systems around the world are a lot different than uh than our own. So if you're a would be would be hacker, like you said, it's Joe Schmo in his in his basement, and you're like, you know what? I want to I want to join this fight. You could wind up like being somewhere uh else for the next 20 to 30 years of your life. <laughs> because you caused a blackout or uh you indirectly caused a uh hospital to lose power, right? And somebody somebody died. Like there there's severe ramifications for for would be hackers in the future. Um, because you could easily cause a, a fatality just by messing with traffic lights. So, like, you, you're going to be uh, up a creek 
potentially in, in the in the near future. So it, it's best for you to a not be involved in these uh these incursions and things of that nature. But but b uh you you have to just choose wisely if you were to to put yourself in that situation. And I don't think there is a wise choice because you never know. Like it's international court, right? You don't know who history is going to side with <laughs> in these in these uh uh. Uh, battles and incursions, right? Like you, you could be root. Like it could be the good guys uh, from your perspective, and it could be the bad guys from the court's perspective. So we'll see. See what the future holds. Uh, but I, I just thought it was interesting. Like, like finally, it's it's being taken serious enough to go to the international court. Uh, but there's been a lot of weirdness with uh, the current uh, invasion of Ukraine. There's a lot of people out there uh, giving their services to Ukraine or to, to, to Russia who have nothing to do with either one of those countries per se, but they want to, you know, they, they, they want to, uh, to root for, for their, their home team or, or whomever, you know, you can be in, in serious uh, trouble uh, due to that. So we'll see what the future holds. Like I can see a year from now, we talk about so-and-so, uh, you know, uh, despondent who decided to hack from the states and now he's being extradited to Geneva <laughs> to to stand trial now that the war is over, right? So I don't know. It's a, a interesting mental uh, uh, gymnastic type experiment, but I think it's going to come to fruition uh, in the near future. Like uh, this this. Invasion can't last forever. So once that's uh, once the dust settles, that there'll be trials and tribulations and people uh, uh, sent elsewhere to to be uh, sentenced for their crimes. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you start to see people from countries that like America, Canada, like <laughs> you know what I mean, like places that had nothing to do with this war, start to to be lined up and have to to uh, answer for their um, their actions within the uh, the war. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see more more to come. Like it's all speculation for now, but I, I thought that was very interesting that they're like, because uh, it's it's very low key. They're like, yeah, we already have laws that exist for this. Like we don't have to reinvent anything. We can just is, plug this in. That is true, and they did they did mention that in the article. Like, no, we're not we're not coming up with something to reinvent the wheel. We're just enforcing this what we already have on the books, right? So right. That, that's a very good point on that. So it's not like they have to go out and write this long missive, write these these long procedures, not necessarily procedures, but uh justification, I guess you could say. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. These are these are war crimes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we right. that's that's in our wheelhouse. We do that all day, you know? Yeah. And and these people don't necessarily uh like A, they're not part of a military, but B, they might not even do the research. They were like, you know what? I just want to um there there's chaos and I want to uh help or I want to hinder or I want to do whatever. Um so like you think of, you know, uh, the GRU and Russia and how they're already part of a military, part of a nation state. But then you have all these randos out there who want to fight the good fight as well. You never made a uniform. You don't understand the the, the rules of engagement uh, and they're ever, ever changing. Right. And then you have a significant impact. Like one man took down all of North Korea. Right. Like <laughs> like you have people out there right now who made significant impacts on either side of the war um, and then. They, it'll be attributed to them and then they will be locked up forever so it's crazy crazy to think about but we'll see we'll see what the future holds but definitely continue to tune in uh throughout the week so monday tuesday our topics wednesday discussion and thursdays will either be ask sispy or throwback but i want to keep that thursday slot going and then friday is everything else movies books games tv shows all that good stuff so definitely check us out for friday as well for your non-cyber uh security uh stuff so uh stay safe stay secure Thank you.